Okay, thank you for hosting. I'm glad to be here. My name is Sharon Colopy, and I have been a Kutz parent for 16 consecutive years. By the time I'm out, it'll be 20, which is a little depressing when I've seen kindergarten parents turning 30. <laughs> um, I have five kids. My oldest is finishing his, finished his junior year at Penn State. My next finished her freshman year at Penn State. I have a seventh grader at Lenape, a fifth grader, and a second grader at Kutz. And they're the reason I got involved in education. Um, when I, before I even had kids, one of the Central Park School Board members back in 87 or 88 said to me, um, we just adopted a new reading program. You don't have to teach phonics anymore. I said, what? She said, I know it sounds ridiculous, but they say it'll work. It didn't. I got my, first, my oldest to first grade. I was told not to correct his spelling. Well, I wasn't going to say, Johnny, you stupid boy. Cat is spelled with a C. You know, I went ahead and I corrected the kid's spelling when I went in there for writer's workshop. But that was part of our program. So I started researching curriculum and educational theories, and I've been doing that ever since. Um, I've learned a lot about that. Then came everyday math, and I've been speaking out against that for years. Letters to the editor, home and school meetings. I'm a former home and school um, co-president. I've been involved in probably too many committees to, to list here. Um, Central Bucks has always been successful, in large part, despite some of the weird curriculum programs we have, because we have educated, involved parents. And that may be one way that we can help with some of the budget uh, problems that we're having now, whether it's getting more of them to help out the teachers um, in the lunchroom, on the uh, playground. We have. We've got some brilliant moms that are stay-at-home moms. We've got dads that have flexible schedules that can come in and help. So this is one way that we can help with the, um, with the budget. I also learned through studying curriculum um, about a lot of the things that are going on nationwide and in our state. Um, the Keystone exams that we just started. Um, I am in favor of a good final exam. You take a course, you have to take an exam. But Pennsylvania spent tens of millions of dollars developing these Keystone exams. At the same time, we were sending people to the Governor's Association to develop the Common Core State Standards. And those may be thrust down our throats. We've had to tweak our Algebra I program this year a bit to fit in a, couple, a few things that would be contained on the Keystone exam that weren't in our course. We've always had excellent core programs from the middle school on up, from the standard level to the honors level to the AP level. And I've had kids in both levels, from, OK, not doing any homework, to Penn kids. Um, so I've been following that. It's something that we have to be aware. We have to talk to our state legislators. My research led me to testify on math standards in front of the State Board of Education. Um, I suggested that uh, calculators be banned from elementary school because um, if uh, it, our kids don't need help learning to use handheld electronic equipment. Um, we've got to trim the budget. I would look to um, pension. I would look to increase medical contributions. I am in favor of activity fees. Not across the board, flat rate like other school districts have done. My kids have played sports. And if you've had a high school sport uh, athlete in CB lately, you know that we have pay to play already. It's just not official. I would rather pay a little more for my own kids than have to spread that burden over the taxpayers. Um, look to advertising. Look to get rid of that stupid grad project because colleges don't care anyway. They don't even see it. Um, I'm probably about time, about time out. Any questions? A comment. Yes. I hardly agree on the calculator issue. Thank you. I we could we could sell them and maybe raise a few bucks. I was shocked when I found out they were using calculators. 
Well, pay to play is an issue that's been raised in a lot of school districts to, to raise money so that you wouldn't have to cut extracurricular activities and sports. You need that for a well-rounded education. But they're expensive. A good football helmet, uh, the new Revolution helmets, can be $150. Um, so what does the player pay? Well, OK, it, it depends on the sport. I'll give wrestling as an example. When I was treasurer and the team mom for CB West Wrestling, we did have a fundraising activity where we, I, I published the 72-page program, uh, maybe varied pages here or there for a few years. So we gave the kids an opportunity to go out and sell ads, or the families took an ad, and it was a great program, and we gave it out at all the home matches. The kids had to sell $250 in ads, or somebody had to give me a check. So not only was I the publisher of the program, I was the enforcer. Now, sometimes I would find out if a student truly couldn't afford it. We set in our budget, we'd have a parent group meet, we'd set in our budget, and we had some cushion. And if somebody truly couldn't do it, maybe they could get out and they could do some fundraising, but if they couldn't do it and the parent couldn't make up a difference, I did not go after them. And no one knew who couldn't pay. So that was, they were protected. Any other? Thank you. One more? Okay. Assuming that you know your competitor platform, what differentiates you and Leslie Carson is running against me, and I don't know her well. She also was a Kutz uh, parent. I'm not as concerned about healthy lunches as she is. I've packed my kids' lunches for 16 years. Um, yes, if we're going to offer lunches in school, we need to have healthy choices, but I would never take french fries and cookies away from the kids. So um, I'm, I'm not in favor of full day kindergarten because we can't afford it. Um, there are some things that would be nice in our ideal world, but we can't afford it. Thank you. That was fantastic.